Hi, Heart Room friends. We're reading Little House in the Big Woods, and we're on page 103. Pa is in town trading his furs. The sun sank out of sight, and the woods grew dark, and he did not come. Ma started supper and set the table, but he did not come. It was time to do the chores, and still he had not come. Ma said that Laura might come with her while she milked the cow. Laura could carry the lantern. So Laura put on her coat, and Ma buttoned it up, and Laura put her hands into her red mittens that hung by the red yarn string around her neck, while Ma lighted the candle in the lantern. Laura was proud to be helping Ma with the milking, and she carried the lantern very carefully. Its sides were of tin, with places cut in them for candlelight to shine through. When Laura walked behind Ma on the path to the barn, the little bits of candlelight from the lantern leapt all around her on the snow. The night was not quite yet dark. The woods were dark, but there was a gray light on the snowy path, and in the sky there were a few faint stars. The stars did not look as warm and bright as the little lights that came from the lantern. Laura was surprised to see the dark shape of Sookie, the brown cow, standing at the barnyard gate, and Ma was surprised too. It was too early in the spring for Sookie to be let out into the big woods to eat grass. She lived in the barn, but sometimes, on warm days, Pa left the door of her stall open so she could come into the barnyard. Now, Ma and Laura saw her behind the bars, waiting for them. Ma went up to the gate and pushed against it to open it, but it did not open very far because there was Sookie, standing against it. Ma said, Sookie, get over. She reached across the gate and slapped Sookie's shoulder. Just then, one of the little dancing bits of light from the lantern jumped between the bars of the gate, and Laura saw long, shaggy black fur and two little glittering eyes. Suki had thin, short brown fur. Suki had large, gentle eyes. What is in the barnyard? Is that Suki the cow? No. What is it? Uh-oh, what got into the barnyard? Ma said, Laura, walk back to the house. So Laura turned around and began to walk toward the house. Ma came behind her. When they had gone part way, Ma snatched her up, lantern and all, and ran. Ma ran with her into the house and slammed the door. And then Laura said, Ma, was it a bear? Yes, Laura, Ma said, it was a bear. Laura began to cry. She hung on to Ma and sobbed. Oh, will he eat Sookie? No, Ma said, hugging her. Sookie is safe in the barn. Think, Laura. All those big, heavy logs in the barn walls and the door is heavy and solid, made to keep bears out. No, the bear cannot get in and eat Sookie. Laura felt better then. But he could have hurt us, couldn't he? She asked. He didn't hurt us, Ma said. You were a good girl, Laura, to do exactly as I told you and to do it quickly and without asking me why. Ma was trembling, and she began to laugh a little. To think, she said, I've slapped a bear. Then she put supper on the table for Laura and Mary. Pa had not come home yet. He didn't come. Laura and Mary were undressed, and they said their prayers, and they snuggled into the trundle bed. Ma sat by the lamp, mending one of Pa's shirts. The house seemed cold and still and strange without Pa. Laura listened to the wind in the big woods. All around the house, the wind went crying, as though it were lost in the dark and the cold. Even the wind sounded frightened. Isn't that a great way to describe the wind? The wind was crying. Can you imagine the wind blowing so hard that it sounds like it's crying? Ma finished mending the shirt. Laura saw her fold it carefully and slowly. She smoothed it with her hand. Then she did a thing she had never done before. She went to the door and pulled the leather latch string through its hole in the door so that nobody could get in from the outside unless she lifted the latch. She came and took Carrie, all limp and sleeping, out of the big bed. She saw that Laura and Mary were still awake, and she said to them, Go to sleep, girls. Everything is all right. Pa will be here in the morning. Then she went back to her rocking chair and sat there rocking gently and holding baby Carrie in her arms. She was sitting up late, waiting for Pa, and Laura and Mary were meant to stay awake, too. Still, he came. Till he came, but at last they went to sleep. In the morning, Pa was there. He had brought candy for Laura and Mary and two pieces of pretty calico to make them each a dress. Mary's was a china blue pattern on the white ground and Laura's was dark red with little golden brown dots on it. Ma had calico for a dress too. 
It was brown with a big feathery white pattern all over it. They were all happy because Pa had got such good prices for his fur that he could afford to get them eat such beautiful presents. The tracks of the big bear were all around the barn and there were marks of his claws on the walls, but Suki and the horses were safe inside. All that day the sun shone, the snow melted, and little streams of water ran from the icicles, which all the time grew thinner. Before the sun had set that night, the bear tracks were only shapeless marks in the wet, soft snow. After supper, Pa took Laura and Mary on his knees and said that he had a new story to tell them. Can't wait to hear that new story with you. It's called The Story of Pa and the Bear in the Way. We'll read that next time. <laughs>